Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today we're going to be diving deep into the life of Regulus Arcturus Black, also known as R.A.B, a character that may not be particularly well known by those who have only seen the films. You may recall him as the enigmatic character whose journey from loyalty to Lord Voldemort to becoming a courageous defector captured the hearts of fans worldwide. Today I'll be telling his compelling story, diving into the biography of one of the wizarding world's unsung heroes. But first, a brief introduction. In the realm of the wizarding world, the name Regulus Black resonates with a sense of mystery and intrigue. Born into the noble house of Black, known for its complex history and unwavering belief in pure blood supremacy, Regulus's destiny seemed predetermined. However, life often presents unexpected paths, and Regulus's journey would lead him down a road less traveled. Shrouded in the very darkness he sought to embrace, Regulus's story begins with a complex upbringing. Biography Born in 1961 to Orion and Walburga Black, Regulus Arcturus Black grew up in the esteemed House of Black alongside his elder brother, Sirius. He got the name Regulus from his great uncle, and the name Arcturus from his paternal grandfather. The Blacks were, at one point, one of the most powerful wizarding families in all of Britain. Their family lineage can be traced back through the centuries, and was at one time celebrated as one of the proudest pure-blood families in the world. But by the time Regulus and his brother Sirius were born, only a few male heirs remained, and while their shared bloodline connected them, the respective journeys of Regulus and Sirius would take them down vastly different paths. As far as physical appearance is concerned, Regulus possessed the same classic black family traits that set them apart from others. His dark hair, cascading in sleek waves, framed a face that exuded an air of enchanting mystique. The blacks, known for their esteemed bloodline and pride in their pure blood heritage, were marked by sharp and angular features. Regulus encapsulated this aesthetic, with defined cheekbones and a strong jawline that showcased his determination and conviction. Beyond his physical attributes, Regulus Black possessed an inherent style that reflected his noble lineage. He carried himself with a regal posture, commanding attention whenever he entered a room. His choice of attire, often consisting of tailored robes and ornate accessories, exemplified the refined taste and impeccable standards of the Black family. But while his appearance and style may have aligned him with the traditions and expectations of the elite, it was Regulus's internal transformation that would truly set him apart. Growing up in the prestigious Black family, Regulus was expected to embrace their pure blood elitism, and while his brother Sirius rebelled against their family's traditions, Regulus was drawn to the allure of their noble lineage, dutifully following in the footsteps of his parents and other ancestors. I hated the lot of them, my parents with their pure blood mania, convinced that to be a black made you practically royal, my idiot brother soft enough to believe them, that's him, he was younger than me and a much better son, as I was constantly reminded. Though Sirius was the older son and official heir, the pair's parents much preferred Regulus. Sirius, fueled by a burning desire for freedom and justice, rejected the family's narrow-minded views and broke free from their expectations. By rejecting these ideals, Sirius caused a deep rupture within the family. The divide between Sirius and his parents only grew stronger when, upon beginning his studies at Hogwarts, he was sorted into Gryffindor House. Regulus, on the other hand, embraced the family's beliefs and traditions, earning the approval of their parents. This bond became even stronger when Regulus, upon beginning his studies at Hogwarts, was sorted into Slytherin House. And it was within the hallowed halls of Hogwarts that Regulus first began to develop into the wizard he was destined to become, attending the school for roughly seven years between 1972 and 1979. In addition to his studies, Regulus became a seeker for the Slytherin Quidditch team, putting his agility on display in pursuit of the elusive Golden Snitch, becoming a Death Eater. From a very early age, Regulus held great admiration for Lord Voldemort, and dreamed of one day joining the ranks of the Death Eaters. 
His room, which was adorned with cutouts of articles and photographs from the Daily Prophet, showcasing the Dark Lord and his followers, was a testament to his fascination. Beneath this was a collection of yellow newspaper cuttings, all stuck together to make a ragged collage. Hermione crossed the room to examine them. They're all about Voldemort, she said. Regulus seems to have been a fan for a few years before he joined the Death Eaters. By the time he was 16, Regulus had become an official Death Eater and received the infamous Dark Mark, an emblem of his allegiance to Voldemort and his pursuit of pure blood supremacy. Surprisingly, his family, although never having been Death Eaters themselves, shared similar beliefs and approved of Regulus embracing this path. They saw Voldemort as the champion of their cause, someone who sought to establish the superiority of pure blood wizards over muggles. And when Regulus aligned himself with Lord Voldemort and joined the ranks of the Death Eaters, he entered a world shrouded in secrecy, bound by an unwavering commitment to the Dark Lord's cause. Regulus became a pawn in Voldemort's grand scheme, a pawn tasked with following orders and carrying out acts of unspeakable horror. He found himself surrounded by a motley crew of individuals, each driven by their own twisted desires and unwavering loyalty to their dark leader. For most of the people that Regulus had become affiliated with, the allure of power and acceptance within this exclusive group was enough to keep them firmly entrenched in Voldemort's dark embrace. However, Regulus Arcturus Black's journey as a Death Eater took a different turn, eventually taking a glimpse at the true nature of Voldemort's reign, the suffering inflicted upon innocent lives and the corruption that festered within his ranks. Defecting As Regulus delved deeper into the inner workings of the Death Eaters, his perspective began to shift, and by 1979, Regulus had developed serious reservations about his allegiances to Voldemort and the Death Eaters. However, in spite of his loss of faith, Regulus was still hesitant to take any sort of action. That is, until one day, when Voldemort needed the assistance of Regulus's house elf, Creature. Eager to please his master, Regulus readily agreed to Creature helping him, unaware of the fate that awaited his poor family's servant. Unknown to Regulus, Voldemort wanted to use Creature to test the defenses around his locket, Horcrux. Voldemort's intention was to leave the house elf to die. Fortunately, Creature managed to escape, at which point he returned to his master Regulus, recounting all of the gruesome details. It was at this point that Regulus truly became aware of Voldemort's callousness and disregard for those who faithfully served him. This maltreatment of Creature proved to be a turning point for Regulus. It awakened within him a sense of compassion and the realization that the values he had once embraced were flawed. In this moment, Regulus finally recognized the darkness and cruelty that lay beneath the surface of his grandiose ambitions. And so, Regulus Black embarked on a journey that would shape not only his own destiny, but also the fate of the Wizarding World. Plot Against Voldemort When reunited with his loyal house elf creature, the depths of Voldemort's callous nature was not the only thing he uncovered. It was in this moment that Regulus also uncovered the truth behind Voldemort's immortality. How Regulus came to the conclusion that the locket to Horcrux tying Voldemort to the mortal realm is not clear, but what was clear to Regulus is that the cursed locket needed to be destroyed. And so, with a steadfast determination to destroy this twisted remnant of the Dark Lord's power, Regulus, along with Creature, devised a daring plan. They would create a replica of the locket, destroy the real locket, and leave the decoy in its place. This plan would ensure that Voldemort's Horcruxes would not be entirely unsusceptible to destruction. With his loyal companion Creature by his side, Regulus ventured into a treacherous cave, facing the perils that lay within. He brought along with him a replica of the locket, and of course, his famous letter. To the Dark Lord, I know I will be dead long before you read this, but I want you to know that it was I who discovered your secret. I have stolen the real Horcrux and intend to destroy it as soon as I can. I face death in the hope that when you meet your match, you will be mortal once more. R.A.B. But Regulus's mission came with one very big sacrifice, his life. 
In order to reach the Horcrux, he had to brave the potion that protected it, a potion known as the Drink of Despair. The potion in question had a mysterious nature, capable of inducing intense agony, fear, confusion, and an overwhelming thirst. Furthermore, the only way to dispel the potion was by consuming it in its entirety. This unique characteristic indicated that the potion was designed to safeguard something of utmost significance, and although the potion typically did not result in death, it did leave the drinker severely weakened and vulnerable. Undoubtedly, this potion must act in a way that will prevent me taking the Horcrux. It might paralyze me, cause me to forget what I'm here for, create so much pain I'm distracted, or render me incapable in some other way. This being the case, Harry, it will be your job to make sure I keep drinking, even if you have to tip the potion into my protesting mouth. You understand? And so, Regulus drank the potion that protected the Horcrux, sacrificing himself to allow Creature to complete their mission. The Drink of Despair, however, was not the only safeguard protecting Voldemort's Horcrux. In the cave containing the locket, there was also a lake, a lake that housed an army of Inferi controlled by Lord Voldemort. And it wasn't the potion that caused Regulus to meet his demise, but instead the Inferi, who dragged the weakened Regulus to his death. Before meeting his demise, however, Regulus gave Creature a very specific set of instructions. 1. Replace the real locket with a fake one. 2. Flee without him. 3. Find a way to destroy the Horcrux. And 4. Never reveal the truth to the Black family. Despite the dangerous circumstances, Creature was able to obey his master's instructions and switch the lockets before leaving the island. Unfortunately, however, Creature was not able to destroy Voldemort's locket. Legacy In his final act, Regulus demonstrated the true strength of character and the power of one person to make a difference, no matter how small they may seem. His journey epitomizes the complexities of family, loyalty, and the search for redemption. Born into a world of privilege and entrenched beliefs, Regulus's choices challenged the very foundations upon which he was raised. But Regulus's legacy goes beyond his contributions to the fight against Voldemort. He also, much like his brother, was able to shatter the mold of a typical black family member, known for their pure blood supremacism. By challenging his family's beliefs and aligning himself with the good guys, Regulus demonstrated the power of individual conscience and the ability to break free from the prejudices of one's lineage. Relationships Now that we've got a good sense of Regulus Black's story, I want to next segue into some other elements of his character, particularly the complicated nature of his various relationships, as well as the rationale for why he was omitted from the movies. Regulus didn't have many particularly strong bonds in the wizarding world, this is in large part due to the fact that he defected against the group that he previously aligned himself with. However, if we were to consider the relationships in Regulus's life, I think that the two most important ones are Sirius and Creature. Regulus's relationship with Sirius was strained right from the start. Sirius, being the eldest, hoped that he could protect Regulus from the poisonous influence of their family. He wanted his younger brother to have a chance at a life outside the constraints of their oppressive lineage. Regulus, however, became swayed by the allure of power. He shared his parents' belief in pure blood supremacy, making him a favored son, and it was actually this shared ideology that prompted him to join the Death Eaters in the first place. By embracing the ideals of his parents, Regulus went on to receive more and more validation, further casting a shadow over Sirius, who vehemently rejected the belief system held by his family. With the two boys going down very separate paths, it was nearly impossible for them to maintain any semblance of a relationship. Regulus actively sought validation from his parents by embracing their ideals, whereas Sirius, disenchanted with his family's values, distanced himself from the Black family and its ideology. It's entirely safe to say that the two boys simply never saw eye to eye, However, despite their differences, there are indications of underlying love between the brothers. We get a glimpse of how Sirius feels about his brother in the Order of the Phoenix, when Sirius discusses his family and brother. Analyzing the text closely, Sirius seems to discuss his family with pure contempt. 
he's disgusted by them. On the other hand, when he discusses Regulus, his tone shifts. Yeah, he calls him his stupid idiot brother, but I think there's some love there. I think that the reminder of his brother incites rage in Sirius, not because of what he was, but instead the poor decisions that he made. I think that Sirius sees Regulus as a lost opportunity, a brother he could have been close with that made all the wrong decisions under his parents' influence. A man that blindly sought validation and power without ever truly thinking of the consequences. Leave? Sirius smiled bitterly and ran a hand through his long, unkempt hair. Because I hated the whole lot of them, my parents with their pure blood mania, convinced that to be a black made you practically royal. My idiot brother, soft enough to believe them, that's him. Sirius jabbed a finger at the very bottom of the tree, the name Regulus Black, a date of death some fifteen years previously, followed the date of birth. He was younger than me, said Sirius, and a much better son, as I was constantly reminded. But he died, said Harry. Yeah, said Sirius. Stupid idiot. He joined the Death Eaters. You're kidding. It's clear that Sirius blames Regulus' bad decisions on stupidity, rather than explicitly calling him a bad person. Analyzing the way he speaks even further, I think that the pauses in his speech speak volumes. There are clearly things that he wants to say that he leaves unsaid, which tells me that Sirius' impression of his brother is not anything like how he sees the rest of his family. I think that the path that Regulus eventually went down proves that there was a lot more of Sirius in him than Sirius ever knew, which could perhaps suggest that, had they gone down a more similar path, these two brothers would have been incredibly close. But perhaps the most important and simultaneously unlikely relationship in Regulus Black's life was with the Black family house elf, Creature. As we know, Creature was instrumental in helping Regulus defy Voldemort, but I don't think that what Creature subjected himself to would have been accessible to just any Black family member. In truth, Creature and Regulus shared a special bond. The relationship between Regulus and Creature was formed within the Black family home where Creature served as a traditional house elf for generations. Over the years, Regulus always treated Creature with immense kindness and respect, which ultimately fostered a deep bond between them. This type of behavior stood in deep contrast to the typical treatment of house elves by pureblood families. According to Creature, Regulus was extremely kind to him, and the loyalty that Regulus showed Creature inspired fierce devotion in return. This bond is evident in Creature's unwavering dedication to Regulus, even after his master's death, as seen in his role in the Lockett Horcrux mission. Omission from the films Regulus Black's character contributes significantly to the intricate tapestry of the Harry Potter narrative. His courage, redemption arc, and sacrifice create a powerful contrast to the story's central themes of love and friendship. Regulus's exploration of dark magic and eventual turn against Voldemort add depth and layers to the wizarding world. But I felt that by excluding Regulus from the films, a vital piece of the story is left untold. Movie-only fans are denied the opportunity to witness the complexities of Regulus' character and the lessons his journey imparts. The absence of his redemption and sacrifice robbed audiences of a powerful and moving narrative thread. But ultimately, I think it was the challenges of translating a vast and intricate book series into a limited movie format that undoubtedly played a role in Regulus' omission. There was too much going on and too much to cover, which meant that filmmakers had to prioritize central characters and storylines. Regulus's character, while significant in the books, may have been deemed expendable with regards to the film. Regulus Arcturus Black's absence from the Harry Potter movies is undoubtedly felt by fans who recognize the significance of his character in the original series. His exclusion deprived us of a redemption story brimming with poignancy and lessons, and while the reasons for his omission may stem from the challenge of adapting the books and streamlining the narrative, the impact is undeniable. Regulus's presence would have added another layer of richness and complexity to the on-screen world we fell in love with. Closing thoughts Despite his significant contributions to the wizarding world, Regulus's legacy remains largely unknown. His story, hidden in the shadows, is a testament to the many unsung heroes who sacrificed themselves for the greater good. 
without the glory or recognition that their deeds deserved. It is up to us, the devoted fans, to ensure that Regulus's legacy is not forgotten and that his name is honored for his courageous acts. As Sirius himself once said, we've all got both light and dark inside us. What matters is the part we choose to act on. That's who we really are. And that's it for this video. If you enjoy the content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.